Next, we go on to some world content. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, this is interesting. So we're actually getting to really understand what the world content picture of this expansion is going to be. So in the most recent build, they added in the four new major factions, which are basically reps. They work uh, pretty differently to reps in the past. Each one seems to have quite a lot more, like just like tailored bespoke content, which is mm -hmm. really good. And they're, they're sort of own style of progression. But on top of that, there are a few other things that are just sort of generally going on as well. So Primeless Invasions are one of these. This is probably a bit closer to things we've seen in the game. Basically, they are world events. They've also got a currency and there's purchasable gear attached. The way it works is that every six hours, two of the four Dragon Isle zones will be invaded by Primalist forces. The location will be marked with a big X. Now, these invasions last for two hours. Then there'll be a six hour timer for when the next invasion triggers uh, after the first one ends and they are themed after air, earth, fire, and water. So this is going on in the world. In addition to that, you've got world quests, which are tied to the factions. And then in addition to that, you've got the things that are unique for each of the factions. Which is kind of interesting. So there's a currency you get from this, right? Called Elemental Overflow. You can get this currency by just grinding the mobs, which a lot of people will feel pretty good. Yeah, it's just like, hey, kill the dudes, get the currency, buy some shit. So there is no limit other than time for acquiring this currency. So there's weapons you can get for 800 of it, helm chests and legs for 500, shoulders, gloves and boots for 350, bracers, belts, cloaks for 200. So this is basically just a big old grindable currency. I think that's similar enough to LFR item level for the first season, but don't quote me on it. I think so, yeah. Now, there's another currency. The Storm Sigils. Now, these are rare. They're from grinding mobs in these, uh, like, I think more rare elite ones. Um, and I think you can only get, like, so many of these. It's one, you get one, you basically you finish, in a, you finish one evasion, invasion, you get one Storm Sigil. There's four evasions a week, so you get four Sigils a week. Which yeah. then means you need uh, 20 weeks to get a uh, full set of gear. I think these are 395, actually. Yeah, they are. Yeah. So yep. they get 395 gear, which is just three eye levels lower than normal mode raid. And now you can only get one of these per invasion per week, meaning yeah. you can get four of these a week. Now, yeah, it's, they're expensive. Yeah, it's like I was saying, 79. Yeah. 79 total for a full set of gear, which means it's going to be 20 weeks. Which I haven't done it because I know. Fuck that. But it, like the, the ciphers of the first one grind for raid appropriate like or getting up to the higher item level was probably not too far from this i think yeah unless you were in kind of insane but that's the point of i guess the problem is going to be um it's just going to feel a little bit like the initial sandborn well, grind is which was is there a butt yeah there's a fairly major butt yeah what's that it ain't just this storm uh, surges yeah no it's not just that so this is one way of getting gear around this item level but as you are doing the reputations the new reps, as you go through their renown track, you will eventually unlock eye level 395 gear as well. Yeah, but I'm, I'm more referring to the specific part of... It wasn't the sign one gear I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of... Look at you and your item levels more important than the actual gear. Brain, you're fucking... You're based, um, But the... Because I think about the Des Mephisto problem of Corthia. I think it was Corthia. Where it's like, this is going to take me hundreds of days to grind this this gear set out oh right for just collect to get it for yeah. collectability because you don't want the you want the collection or you you know some people want the number collection some people want the appearance for stuff like that so it's similar to like the core thing it could be similar to the core thing gear of technically speaking you're only supposed to like this is supposed to be get slots filled up with this gear do your do your envisions uh your four times a week and then go oh i've got enough I haven't been able to, I've been lucky enough to get a weapon, say. So you save up for three weeks, well, four weeks, and then get your weapon and go, oh, thank God, bad luck protection in the form of this other form of gear, as opposed to alternate path. But it is kind of alternate path in a s slow way. It's just a thing of, is this, is 20 weeks a long ass time to be getting one set of gear? Yes. Yes. Yeah, but is <laughs> yeah, that's the whole thing of like people are like ah, I want this gear now. What's because I did see someone in chat say, what's the point of it being in if it's for twenty weeks? But it's like that's uh, that reminds me of what I think it was Scarzard was saying a long time ago on Twitter of like, uh, I guess we 
us like outsiders looking at stuff, we don't know the intent of some of this stuff. We kind of project our own intent, our own desires onto it. That's what we want. Whereas on the developer side, they could have like a completely different intent of, oh, no, 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 no. We don't expect anyone to get all of this. We want this to be prestigious for hardcore grinders to have the whole set. We expect most of this to be for people who are like, just like I said earlier, getting little bits of filler gear. We don't expect people to do this all the time because raid gear and M plus gear outpaces it so quick. We expect this to be just for people who log in and have like 20 minutes of PvE time a week. Yeah. And if that's because if they said that, then everyone would go, still don't make it look too nice or we'll be upset because we don't want to do that for that gear. But fair enough. It's like, that's the thing of, it is just awkward. It is yeah. awkward because everyone I, wants everything immediately and you understand that because, yeah. I think this overall intent is that this is a uh, this is a source of gear that is alongside the gear that you get as you progress through the four major faction reps. Yeah. For people who are just doing world content mainly. Yeah. I imagine raiders will probably want one or two pieces maybe if they get unlucky in a slot or something like that. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that. Now in terms of what they look like, I mean, here we go. It's kind of like a lightning-ish uh, recolor. Or, you know, set yeah, they look coloration. good. So they look good. Yeah, they look pretty sweet. Now, in addition, there's also seemingly world PvP currency and gear. Cool. So trying to make world PvP more of a thing, which, uh, I mean, man, that's certainly interesting. So this new thing is called Blood Tokens, obtained from the bloody battles of the Dragon Isles, and it creates this uh, this set. Uh, the two set bonus is versatility. The four set, when you're stunned, harden your resolve, absorbing up to 72,000 damage for 10 seconds. I mean, my character at a beginning item level uh, has got like 140k health. Mm -hmm. Cannot occur once, uh, more than once every two minutes. Six set, killing an enemy player gives you Berserker's Frenzy, increasing verse and movement speed, can stack up to 10 times. Uh, they want to bring a little so. bit of that uh, BFA world PvP back, but with the gear progression to do that. Yeah, that's cool. I think that's a, yeah, that's a good thing to do. Now, this world PvP has got the uh, PvP gear, has the same base appearance as the Primalist Invasion stuff, but a more red coloration. So pretty sweet. It's uh, purchase. Yeah, its item level is three hundred and eighty nine right now. Yep. A bit odd that it doesn't say that it's higher in PvP and lower in PvE. Well, it's um, not PvP gear, right? I guess so. World yeah. PvP gear. Yeah, it's world PvP gear. Yeah, so yeah, I guess fair. that's. You know, I don't think you really want to do that too often of the, oh, as soon as you hit an enemy player, your, your item level goes yeah. way up. Well, that's how it was in WAD. Yeah, that's how it was in WAD, but there's a lot of things in WAD they don't want to do again. Yeah, yeah, But true. that's the thing where, like, yeah, I, th I think it makes sense because the only problem this will have is once those, um, once those bonuses get completely outweighed by just having better gear. And yep. that's a case of, like, that's a problem with it being 3 at 9. It probably should be closer to normal raid tier. Because then otherwise, you know, you won't have mythic players come in and go, oh, what's that? A 72k shield? Cute. Bang. Gone. But then I suppose that's the thing. It depends how much that versatility for that Breaker's Frenzy is. Because that would be, like, really cool if you could just, hey, I'm good and also have this full set. I will literally be very hard to kill. Especially with verse, where it's, like, damage and uh, damage reduction. So that could be, assuming everything works according to plan, it could actually be just literally, oh, you've got a world PDP set. I think that's like basically like almost unprecedented. Yeah. At least in the very modern world of Warcraft. Look at, look at that. Look at all these different types of gear progression you can have. And then you immediately think, okay, well, let's invent an imaginary person in my head who's mad again. My bag space. My bag space. Your gear equipment set profile isn't good enough. Ah. Uh, I, I, I guess what, what could be happening though is like these invasions yeah. are up. Bunch of people have world PvP turned on. They're getting these bloody, you know, they're getting the bloody token gear. They're getting a bunch of the other gear. Just getting a whole bunch of shit. And yeah. that should feel decent enough. At least like in 8.1 of BFA, having war mode on and going to those like faction assaults was actually pretty fucking good fun. Yeah, it, it was, was like for the few times I did that, it was enjoyable. Yeah, I think the 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 gearing and power levels were really disproportionate and off there. But if this does solve it, then good. As to whether it will or not, it's a different question, of course, but. The intent seems to be that this means, like, at least relatively early world PvP, before people get bored of world content, will actually be, like, populated and fun. Yeah, I mean, hell, I for remember... It's for its own sake, too. Yeah, me, you, and Jared were leveling up in Shadowlands in a group with, in, with war mode on. Deleting people in Ardenwild. It was so much fun. Yep. We were just murdering everyone. It was great. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> just like, what? Did you turn war mode on just so you could get some bonus XP while me and my two friends are going to kill you? <laughs> it was very enjoyable. Yep, and that's the that's what I was. Ah, the video's not out yet. It's going out after, but there's a <laughs> there's a fun quote from uh, I can't remember his name or even I think it was in Gadget. One of the writers talking about survival MMOs when like Rust and stuff was like new and H one Z one stuff, and talking about how they were called survival MMOs despite them not really being MMOs because they're smaller scale. But the idea of like theme park MMOs lost their teeth. So it's like if world PvP is going to exist and people are incentivized to go in and actually have that fun and just be like, oh yeah, well, <laughs> you've opted in to me making your life miserable. And that's kind of the teeth, I think, that uh, theme parks kind of miss for the world navigation and content stuff, which is cool. Yeah, yeah so I like that. Now, next up, group loot. A lot of us have wanted uh, more group loot options, right? Yeah, this seems very cool. Uh, yeah, yeah. So this is Blizzard trying to make, uh, well... I mean, needlessly restrictive. Ah, no. I don't <laughs> trying know. to bring it back and make it better, right? So, a few, uh, few interesting strings. Your class may not roll need on this item. You already have the maximum amount of this item. This item may not be disenchanted. You do not have uh, an enchanter of whatever skill in your group. Need rolls are disabled for this item, and you already have a powerful version of this item. So those are all reasons why you would not be able to roll in something. I can't believe they're removing player agency from this video game. This is a nightmare. This is definitely, well, at least for the, you, your class may not roll need and you have the maximum amount of this. That's why FF14 handles group loot. Yeah. Or it's just, yeah, this is literally not for you. Come back later if you want it, or a different class. It's very good. That's good, right? The idea yeah. that people could maybe troll about with things. They could just need shit they don't need. Yep. Or, you know, need shit that couldn't possibly be useful to them. Yeah. Even on off spec, but that's being blocked. I think, uh, well, yeah, like FF does it. It makes complete sense. Yep. All right, for some of the people who'll be worried about maybe just people ninjing loot or needing and stuff. In that's a, a fair, that's a fair in a way consideration. That's like, yeah. This at least helps. I mean, th yeah, this basically completely blunts a whole bunch of bad behavior yeah, that's around this feature. Yeah, I mean, the only thing that would be... The only thing that make this kind of... Like, well, basically, the only vulnerability I can still see in the system is someone needing on everything, even though they've got a way higher item level, because they don't have that item specifically. But then you can't oh, do yeah, that. You can't do, do that, that, especially not with a Mythic Plus Valor upgrade system, where you go, hey, not that I assume they'll change Mythic Plus loot, but in this case of, hey, you've got an upgrade system of, hey, this is a best item, but it's five item levels below what you got. You can't have it, which, you know, you wouldn't want that to happen. So that's just, group loot is not just being, hey, we brought group loot back and didn't think about it at all. It's, we brought group loot back and we did a little bit of due diligence to make it actually work. Yeah. Yeah. So yep. good shit. Big thumbs up. Good shit. Big, big thumbs, thumbs up. up. 